All right, you beginning figure drawing folks, uh, this is going to be the next lecture of the content that we were going to cover in class, but are now doing from our social, social distanced basements or wherever you might be. Uh, so let's kick it off. Um, this is just going to be sort of the instruction and the discussion of the approach. Uh, the demonstration of that approach, uh, as well as examples and stuff, will be in a different place, probably in Canvas. Um, and then you'll see during our live stream, you'll see me sort of doing this drawing. All right, let's kick over to it. All right, you. All right, so the approach that we're gonna be doing uh, on this black paper, and this is the whole reason I had you get the, the black paper and the white pencil, is we are going to be dealing with light shapes. We've already done shadow shapes in class. You'll remember that uh, in that drawing, we were working through gesture into the structure part of the drawing where we're measuring, trying to get things measured and proportional and looking good before moving on to drawing that border between light and shadow. Uh, we're still very much concerned with that. So that border between light and shadow is critical. It's where, it, where the figure goes from being in the light, having actual light from the light source hitting it, to in the shadow where there can still be light hitting it, but it might be coming from a different plate, like bouncing off the environment back in uh, to the figure. It's not directly from the light source. I've picked this image to show us because it's quite obvious. It's blatantly obvious where the light shapes are, uh, though there are some areas where we're getting some bounce light and I'll point those out. But mainly this is to just show us how little information we really need to still have things feel correct, feel convincing. So this is the approach, light shapes. If I reduce this figure, so I'm gonna walk through and reduce this. This is obviously a photo, uh, but if I reduce it down to just the light shapes, so we'll kill all that, that's about what we get. So this is real, if I, you can see it's really pretty choppy. Uh, pixelated edge. However, the shapes are correct. They have the right nature to them to still make us feel like we're looking at a face. Or, and this is something we'll pick on in this demonstration, this, it's a weird stack of light shapes, and yet it still reads like a hand. Our brain can still make sense of that being a hand, particularly uh, if we're careful about those shapes how big they are, where they are in relation to the other shapes, and so on. So that's going to be the focus of this drawing, is to lay these shapes in as carefully and well as possible from the start. And this is going to be the one time in class you hear me say this blasphemous phrase, which is, we are not going to start this drawing with a gesture. We're going to start this drawing just picking the biggest simplest shape we can start with, drawing that shape, filling it lightly in with uh, white charcoal with a sharp pencil. You really need to make sure your pencils are sharp for this. If you have a dull pencil, it's really going to be, it's going to look like a crayon or it's going to be pretty uh, aggressive. It can be pretty aggressive looking or kind of hasty is probably a better word for it. So make sure you've got a sharp pencil to do this approach in. So we'll start with large shapes. For If it were me, I'd probably pick this shape right through here. Shoulder, shoulders just seem to be easier to me. Like I certainly, I wouldn't start up here in this part of the head, anywhere in the head. Those shapes are just loaded with preconceived notions and baggage. I'm not starting there. I'll start here, probably that shoulder and just draw the shape in as carefully as possible and then fill it in with one light pass. And when I say light pass, I mean it's a light hand. You're not going in and just really drawing those edges in firmly. You're keeping it quite light. So what that would look like on your paper, a light-handed drawing, it's dim. Right? You still have room to work. You really don't want to spend all of your value range in one go. That means you lay the light down so light, so heavy handed, that there's nowhere to go. You've maxed out uh, how light and value your pencil can go. 
All right, so we're gonna we're gonna draw lightly, right, and you'll see me do this as well. It's gonna it's a super sharp pencil, very light touch, just kind of laying in a very even value. It's similar to the shadow shapes that we did, where you draw the shape in and you fill it in with one pass of value. You don't try to go darker or lighter in the shadow shapes. This this stage is gonna be like that. You draw the shapes in. You just fill them in lightly and you leave it at that. However, in this drawing, once you get plenty of those shapes together, like we see here, once there are plenty of these shapes together, in fact, they're starting to look like a dim version of the image that we have, we're going to come back into these shapes. And this is different than the shadow shapes drawing that we did. We're going to come back into this drawing and start deciding where within these shapes, within these light shapes, where is it lighter? Where is it slightly less light? Is there a soft edge, a blurry edge, or is there a hard, sharp edge that goes from really light to really dark quite quickly? Right, so this is what that will look like. I'm gonna pick on this hand so we can see it. Right now, if I look at the overall image, it reads, like I can tell that's a person, I can tell what's going on here, but it's still quite flat. As soon as I start this process of going lighter in some spots, less light in other spots, things start to jump out. So for instance, and this is really kind of a rough version, you'll because it's Photoshop, you'll see me being much more careful than this in the actual drawing, but there we go. Let's like that's an area that seems lighter, like along the top of this shape, this part of that shape here, here, and there. Right? That's like one step. And then I could go a little bit further and be like, you know what? These seem like a little bit lighter areas as well. So they get slightly more of that white charcoal. And I'll kind of leave it there. But if you look at the difference now, you can see that hand is starting to pop really hard, it's starting to take on a lot of dimension. And it's just because I'm being careful with those light shapes. Where is it lighter? And this is a lazy Photoshop version of it because I'm not the greatest on Photoshop. Imagine if I was being extra careful with a pencil here, or indeed if I was being extra careful in Photoshop, uh, how much more convincing this could be. But even, even as it is, that thing is starting to pop off the page really nicely. And the rest of the drawing is going to follow suit. All right, just a few things to look at. So here's that image again. If I look, let's see where it is. If I look, oh, let's go down here. Right down here in this arm, and yeah, right down here in this arm, you'll see it's kind of light, and especially this rim down here is kind of light. And you might be tempted to go, especially right there, I'll look at that little light. You might be tempted to go, oh, okay, white charcoal, and lay that in in white charcoal. And I'm here to tell you right now, do not do that. Don't put any white charcoal whatsoever in anything that reads as a shadow. So I can look at this and know, okay, light is hitting, light is hitting, light is hitting. And it's blown out because I've raised the contrast. But right here, that's the edge of a shadow shape. And this is all in shadow. And the reason that it's lighting up a little bit is because this leg is bouncing light back into that shadow. It can just be ignored. You can safely ignore that. And I would for this drawing. So don't draw anything in this drawing that is supposed to be in shadows. We are just drawing the shapes of the light. You can almost imagine that it's a, like the light source is a shower. Anywhere the water is actually hitting the person, anywhere the photons from the light source are actually hitting the surface, that's a light shape, you draw it in. Anywhere the light is bouncing back in, so it's hitting the leg back into the arm, anywhere that water from the shower, so to speak, is not hitting the surface, you don't draw it. All right. And then after that is when you start into that differentiating 
the light, where is it lighter, where is it slightly less light. You'll also notice that some of these shapes are lighter just in general than others. So this shoulder area I was talking about before, I mean, that is really, that's maxed out. Whereas over here, it's overall much dimmer. See, this shape is a little lighter here and a little darker there, but everything here is darker than this over here. So I'm keeping track of that as well. Right? And I really need a sharp pencil to make sure that I can be as delicate as I need to be to make this drawing really come off well. Right? Okay, so that, that covers it for the light shapes. That's what we're going to be doing in this drawing. Just to recap, we are not going to gesture. Right? We're just going to trust our hand and our eye to do the work. Uh, we are going to measure. We're going to make sure that things are correct, but we're we're not going to start with that cloud of gestures. It's simply going to be too messy for the approach that we're doing. All right, we are only drawing the light shapes. Right, if it does not belong in the light, do not draw it. We're going to draw lightly with a sharp pencil. And when I say draw lightly, I mean don't press hard. Right, keep that hand up off the page. Be gentle about it. It's better to creep up on it rather than to max out and go full white all at once. All right, things to remember about light shapes down here. What size is the shape you're drawing? Since there's no gesture, you're going to have to pick a shape that's reasonably sized. It all, it's, this should feel like shadow shapes and negative shapes kind of combined and a little bit more complicated. What size is the shape? If it's a shoulder, does it make sense to put that shape at the bottom of the page? Probably not. Does it make better sense to put that shape up and sort of off-centered in the page? Probably. So think about that. Um, how big to make it. In these drawings, if your figure runs off the page a little bit or if the size gets kind of weird, I'm not going to worry too much about that uh, because I'm not letting you gesture. We're just jumping straight into the shapes. I will say, however, if you're very careful, you can still get the figure to show up on the page at the right size uh, and looking proportional if you're very careful about measuring the sizes of the shapes that you're drawing. All right, other concerns of light shapes, the angles and proportion. And in parentheses, that says internal, external. Uh, internal angles and proportion. If I'm dealing with a shape, the internal considerations of that shape are things like what angle is that edge of the shape slanted at? Or how wide is this shape compared to how tall it is, right? Is it taller than it is wide? Is it wider than it is tall? That sort of thing. Those are internal considerations. External considerations. What If I measure from this shape to that shape over there, different shape, what's the angle between those two shapes, right? How many of these shapes I did I... How many of these shapes that I just drew will fit in the space before I get to that other shape, right? You're comparing the shape that you did to the things that are around it rather than comparing it to itself. You need to do both. All right, we're also going to be concerned about edges. Is it a soft edge? And a soft edge is just kind of a blurry edge. It's that edge of something turning into the shadow, right? Like a round shoulder moving into shadow. Or is it a hard edge? Hard edges are things like the silhouette, maybe the shoulder against the background, or the edge of a shadow that's being cast down. So that's a sharp edge. It's not very blurry. Right. And then we're going to be worried about value relationships. And that's whenever I say value, you know I mean how light or dark something is. Um, that's also, we're going to think internal and external with that. So internal value relationships will be like, in this weird shape I just drew, where is it lighter and where is it less light? Right? How does the light drop off? If it does at all. And often it will. And then external value relationships are like, how light is this shape relative to that one over there? And just a shortcut for you or something to remember is the closer the shape is to the light source, chances are the lighter that shape is going to be overall. So if you're drawing shoulders and the light is up above the model, the shoulders are going to be brighter. They're going to be lighter in value than the feet, for instance. Even though the feet might be catching 
full light, they're just farther away from the light source. And so chances are they're going to be less light in value. They're not going to be quite as light. And that's just physics right there. All right. Did I mention sharp pencils? Make sure you've got a sharp pencil. You've got all the time in the world now. Sharpen them pencils, folks. Yeah. Sharpen. All right. All right, so that's going to be the approach for these light shapes. It's going to be on the black paper. Stay tuned for the live stream. Um, I'll be walking through that drawing with you. Uh, check Canvas for links to that to the image that we're going to be using. Uh, you can pull it up on whatever you've got and draw along with me.